can you use an e-file to do your cuticle prep? Today I'm going to show you the basics of cuticle bits. Hey guys, Liz from The Nail Hub here and today I'm going to show you guys the basics of cuticle bits all the different kinds that there are and what you need to look for if you're interested in doing e-file preparation for your skin and your nail plate. This is a controversial subject within the professional nail industry and it's funny because the controversy only really comes from certain areas and it really comes from also the comfort level of different nail technicians. If you look at Eastern Europe, for example, it's very common to do something called the machine manicure. And that's essentially where you're using your e-file to do your nail plate and your cuticle area preparation before application of products. In the United States, for example, and even through North America, this is still a newer technique and people have varying opinions on whether or not it's correct or safe. Um, my experience has been very positive. I've been doing cuticle prep with an e-file for many years now. I've never had any ill or adverse effects from it, um, and I haven't, I haven't met anyone who's had adverse effects from it. There obviously are horror stories about people getting cut, you know, their nails damaged, their matrix damaged, but that happens with pretty much anything that you can do with nails. There's gonna be those people that don't use their tools properly and can cause damage, and then there's people that really want to use tools to their advantage, make their job more efficient, more clean, more precise, and doing e-file prep of cuticles is a great way to be able to add precision to your work. All right, so I wanted to show you guys some basic bits, um, ones that you're gonna come across out there in you know, your research, and I have a couple favorites here that I'm gonna show you guys in just a second. So let me just zoom in here so you guys are able to see my little book of bits, okay? So you can see all of these ones up here, these are all cuticle bits they're all made for working on skin and on the nail plate down here we've got ones that are for the actual product here's a few more that are for around the skin area and then i've got some more down here they really vary um, so some of them are going to be different materials which i'll go over in a second and uh, and you'll also see some bits that do look like this that are carbide but they're intended for cuticle like for example i've got a couple down here and i'm going to talk about that in a second as well all right, so let's talk about the main shapes that you're gonna come across. Well, the typical cuticle bits look something like this. These are kind of your beginner basic ones. And I'll just show a few different examples, okay? And I'll also go through what we use these for, for different applications. So let me just kind of line these up for you. Okay, here we go. Okay, so as you can see, I've got these different type of bits. This one looks really coarse on camera, but it's actually not. As you remember from my previous e-file videos, um, I did go over the different colors of bits. If there is no color, sometimes the color gets worn off after you sanitize it a few times because this is usually just painted on. Uh, but you can see that these are all just cylinder diamond bits. And I really want to focus on these two in the center because these are really the ones that I find are most common. So as you can see, they're very similar. They're both long diamond cylinders. It's got the diamond material on there. It's not carbide. It actually is more like a, a file or a buffer when you feel it. There's no grooves, no flutes. So this type of texture is perfect for a beginner. Um, and also the fact that these are just flat cylinders. This one on the left has a rounded top and this one over here has a flat top. So these are gonna be very, very basic bits for doing your cuticle preparation. And there's also a few others that you might see that are very similar. They start to get tapered. So here's one that is slightly different and you can see it's slightly tapered. Okay, so can you guys see the difference between these are straight up and down cylinders and then this one slightly tapers as it gets to the tip. Still rounded on the end. So that's uh, nice for beginners when you're getting into cuticle prep. And to show you guys kind of what we do with this, the point here, and not saying point as in point, but the, the purpose here is that what we want to do is do the same thing that we did with cuticle pusher and nippers with these bits, okay? So the goal here is that this bit is going to be able to push back that cuticle skin. So for example, if I show you my nail here, okay? So the goal here is that we're going to 
push back the cuticle skin as we're working and we're also going to remove any dead dry skin that's there as well as cuticle that's actually attached to the nail plate itself and we can also prep the nail plate. So I'm going to show you a quick video about how this looks when I'm actually doing it but I also wanted to show you really quick on myself so you can see up close, majorly up close, what this looks like. So let me just put my bit in my e-file. Okay, so again, putting the bit in the e-file, I do like to leave it a little ways out. Again, make sure that it's enough in there so that it is secure inside of your machine. And when we do cuticles, we're gonna use a much slower speed, okay? So in the past, you guys saw me do really high speeds. Um, right now, I'm at about maybe 5,000 RPM, so very, very low, and you can see I can touch this. It's nice and smooth, nice and slow. Okay, even the, the tip of it is not sharp. It doesn't cut. It's actually really, really nice. It feels kind of like a, a smooth pumice stone on my skin. Okay, so nice slow speed, about 5,000 RPMs. I am in forward, and I'm just going to show you really quick on here what this looks like. Let me get this focused here. Okay, so you guys can see that. So can you see like right behind my artificial product, I have my cuticle, like there's my epinichium right here, which is this kind of like um, line, like a, like a flesh colored line. Then I've got my, my finger skin up here. I've got my epinichium. And then right here behind my artificial nail, um, behind, behind the artificial product, I've got a little bit of, uh, of area where I could clean that up. And again, I don't need to do this because I just did my nails not too long ago, but I just wanted to show you what this kind of looks like when you do this. So without this on, let me just show you what we're gonna do, okay? So in forward, I'm gonna take my bit and I'm going to lay it perfectly flat to the nail. Imagine I didn't have any product on. I'm gonna put it perfectly flat so that this is just barely, barely grazing the skin and that area. I'm not doing this. Notice I'm not getting in there like that. I really want to just use the whole bit, and if I had nothing on my nail, I could go through the whole nail and really um, clean this up, and I'll show you that just a second in a separate video, okay? So while it's in forward, I'm gonna start in the center, and I'm just gonna go around and then lay it down the side and pull, okay? So come here, center to the left, come down and pull, and I'm gonna do that in forward across all of my fingers. So let me just show you what this looks like, okay? So I'm here. Again, this is a little bit difficult because I've got product on my nails already, but just gentle, 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 going right around. And then when I get to the sidewall, I just lay the whole bit down and I can even flick outward just a little bit. And you can see there's a little bit of top coat right there that I was able to flick off. Can you see that? Can you see the difference between this side and this side? So I'm not creating separation. As you see, there's no separation of my epinichium from my, my fingernail. I'm just pushing it back as if I were using a cuticle pusher. And I want you to be extremely gentle with this. Let me make sure I'm in focus. Okay, so again, I can go right around. If there's a little bit of product, I can get that off as well. Very, very gentle. I'm balancing my hand. And then when I get to the side, I kind of come down and I can go down the whole side. Now, I know a lot of you guys have been asking me about hangnails on the sides. This really helps with that because what it does is it blends everything down and really gets rid of anything. When we cut those, when we cut the, the hangnails, we end up cutting them and there's still a little bit of serration. So if I'm able to come down here, this sidewall, I'm able to blend that really nicely. And if you use this on an extremely low speed, honestly, there's very little you can do to yourself. Like I can come up here and I can push. There's, there's nothing happening. It's not sharp. Um, and you can see, you can see like, you know, if I'm pushing on my skin, you can see the little white mark, okay? So that's the center to the left side. I would do that on all 10 of my fingers. And then I come back and I can do this on the other side. So I'm just gonna come and do center to the right side. And again, this takes a little bit of practice because we're so used to just doing right to left when we're, when we're right-handed. If you're left-handed, you're gonna do the exact opposite of what I'm doing. And the nice thing about diamond bits is they're universal. They can be used both directions. Okay, so just come down like that. You can see if I turn my hand. Okay, so let me dust this off so you can see. So I'm just gonna dust this off with a manicure brush so you can see really well. Okay, 
So no separation whatsoever of the cuticle area. You can see my skin is still attached. You can also see I still have my epinicium and any flesh that still has blood supply to it has not been cut, removed, anything like that. You can also see on the side walls that I'm able to get in there and blend out that natural nail and make it nice and smooth. My skin feels nice and smooth as well. And same here on this side, you can see when I pull it down, I'm able to blend out all of that skin. This is actually artificial product right here. This is part of the gel, okay? But it does make it really nice and clean. But see how like nice and clean that looks. And I have very, very pink nails to begin with. Like my natural nail is pink. But you can see how it keeps my skin nice and clean. And it's an awesome way to do prep. So let me show you a quick video about how we're going to do this prep from start to finish on a natural nail that has no product on it. So I'm starting in forward on my machine at a very low speed, about 5,000 RPMs, and I'm going from the center of the nail to the left side. You can see I actually do very small movements and pick up my bit in between and I keep it moving. And I'm using a very light pressure. I'm basically doing the same thing I would do with a cuticle pusher and nippers, but I'm doing it at the same time. I can also use this bit to go through and remove the natural shine from the nail plate, just like I would have with a buffer or a nail file. I keep the bit extremely parallel to the nail and I just remove the shine evenly and any dried material on the nail plate. Then I'm gonna do the right side using reverse on my machine going from the center to the right. Think about this like wax on, wax off. I wanna push the skin away from the nail plate evenly on both sides. That's why I use two different directions on my e-file. This reverse technique does take a little bit of practice because we're not used to doing it, but it makes for a very nice, even preparation. So you can see before and after, I've done what I would have done with a cuticle pusher as well as a buffer. I've removed the natural shine and pushed back the skin, and I've also removed dried cuticle from the nail plate, but I haven't done any major damage to the nail with this bit. All right, so my other favorite bits for this, once you graduate from the cylinder type shape, so once, once you start with something like this, it's a cylinder. I really like bits like this that are slightly football shaped. It does the same idea, except what this is able to do is get in there a little bit tighter and I'm also able to fix some of the uneven colors. Like you can see right here on the corner of my thumb where a little bit of the color touched the skin, I'm able to clean that up with this bit. So this bit is an intermediate bit. So this is, this is what I would say for, for beginners. So for beginners, you're gonna want something that doesn't have any particular shape to it that has a rounded end. This one you can see is a little bit smaller, a little bit more refined, a little bit more pointy. It's got a football shape to it. And I do like these ones because they're a little bit smaller and they're able to get in those grooves a little bit easier. So if you see like right here, I'm able to go down and just get up there like a little bit more. And also because this is slightly pointy and it has a football shape, see how I am able to keep that tip flat along my nail and then I can go down and really use the belly of that to blend out any hangnails or any product that's touching. So same thing on this side, I can come down like so, okay? So this is definitely intermediate to advanced type of shape. This is gonna be better for beginners or even like the one I was just using that's completely straight up and down. I do really like this one and I'll put the links to these down below. And then for actual removal of any skin, I really like this bit. Um, this bit is similar to a ball bit. So there's lots of ways to remove the dead cuticle from the finger once you've kind of lifted it up. Um, I'll just show you a couple different ones. All right, so these are all different bits that you would use for removing cuticle. And I'll even show you this one, okay? So as you remember from when I did regular cuticle prep, I was able to um, you know, push back the skin. I was able to see like a white line of skin that no longer has a blood supply to it. And technically it is still attached to my epinicium. However, the skin was not, um, was not uh, like live skin. It's, it's skin that can be removed and it's what we would nip off. So any skin that you would nip off, a lot of people use bits like this to remove it instead. Now this one over here, I'm gonna tell you that the corundum type of bit that's this material it is porous, it is like a pumice stone. And so I don't really recommend this style because it's not necessarily perfect to uh, be able to sanitize. Since it is porous, it could be harboring stuff inside of it and you don't want to accidentally 
um, you know, infect somebody with something from somebody else. So I don't like using these porous ones, although they are nice. They are like a, like a nice smooth pumice stone, but they're porous. So in a salon setting, I just, I don't like those. I like metal because they can be autoclaved and they can also be uh, sanitized properly. So you can see there's a ball bit here, a teardrop, the droplet, um, this one that looks like kind of a, a, a blend between a ball bit and this one, and then just a regular ball bit. And ball bits come in all different sizes. Honestly, there's like teeny, teeny, tiny ones. Let me show you some different sizes. Okay, so you can see, I'll put these in order of smallest to largest that there are lots of different sizes of ball bits. It just depends on what you're doing. Um, for larger surface area and for polishing skin, you're gonna want something that's bigger. And if you're just trying to get little teeny areas, you're gonna want something that's smaller. But to be honest, this one in the middle is now my, my favorite. I started using this one because it gives me the best of, of all worlds and allows me to remove skin. And so it allows me to polish. Um, so I'm able to polish the skin up here and around and as you can see, my skin is like really nice and smooth. And I'm also able to remove any dead cuticle. So I'm gonna show you guys what that looks like live on a client. So I first start with that flame shaped cuticle bit, just going around and getting the dead cuticle off of the actual nail plate and smoothing out anything that's in the grooves or very, very close to the cuticle skin. The goal here is to clear out the side walls and get the dead tissue and material off of the nail plate. And then I can go back with my other skin bit and really remove any of the dead crusty skin that's on there without attacking the epinicium. So you'll see that only the skin that wants to come off comes off. And I'm able to leave the epinicium intact, only removing the skin that wants to come off and is really just the dry crusty skin. This also reveals softer skin underneath, which allows for the skin to absorb moisture better. This client has extremely dry skin. So these bits are really great for that rather than hacking off her skin with nippers and ending up, you know, causing these serrations that are prone to tearing. I'm able to exfoliate off of, off all the dead skin, re-moisturize her skin, and it's going to be that much better after the fact. So you can see this bit removes everything really easily, but also very gently. Okay, last but not least, let's talk about some bits like this. Now, I've seen bits like this in metal, and I've also seen them in ceramic, but I don't have any ceramic um, particularly. But just so you guys remember, this is a ceramic bit, okay? But there are bits that look just like this that are in ceramic material. Now, if you remember what I said about carbides, see how this one is different than this? Let me just show you side by side. Can you see the difference in the material? This one is more like a nail file or a buffer, and this one has flutes on it or teeth. I have seen so many bits like this advertised as cuticle bits, as for removing skin, and also for the nail plate. I highly do not recommend that you use this on skin or on nail plate. It has major flutes on it, okay? As you can see, it's, it's like, it's like going to shave the skin. It's like having cuticle nippers on a bit. But this is really not meant for removing a delicate, delicate cuticle area skin. This is more meant for actually filing product around the area. So what we would use this for is not on the actual skin, but for the product in those tight areas to get in there and get that product down. Or you could even use it you know, underneath to clean out underneath. But anything that looks like this, that is a carbide bit that has flutes, that has teeth like this, I do not recommend you use it on skin or on the natural nail plate. It is way too aggressive. I highly recommend you stick with something that is a diamond, that is, you know, has an even grit texture to it and is going to just buff the nail and the skin just like we would if we were using a, um, a, a file or a buffer, okay? So do not use this guy here for skin or for natural nail. All right, and last but not least, we've got some bits like this that you'll see out there that are very, very, very skinny. And these ones are actually for being able to get down into sidewalls. So some clients have sidewalls where their skin like pushes up like this and it's very, very tight to get in there between the skin and their natural nail plate. So these types of pointy bits or the really, really thin needle bits are really great because they're able to get down in there and clean that out. Same thing on big toes. You'll notice the skin on big toes really, really pushes up around, especially like on the corners. Big toes usually have skin like this. 
So it allows you to get down in there and really clean out the corners and the sidewalls. But the rule of thumb with anything is use very, very gentle pressure and also a very, um, a very low speed so that you can control how this is all working, okay? And as I mentioned, I mean, this is something that isn't for everyone. There's a couple things that we wanna take into consideration when we are doing these types of applications, when we are doing these types of, this type of work on people's skin and their nails. Number one is we wanna take a look at the health of the person's finger. There should be no broken skin. They should not have any rings of fire or irritated skin, bleeding skin, anything like that. You really wanna take into consideration the type of skin that you're working on. I am actually a perfect example of someone who is a very, very delicate flower when it comes to my cuticles. As you can see, my cuticle skin, actually my epinicium, okay, comes right out and there is no wall, there is no real delineation between my epinicium and my cuticle area. And so I am a perfect example of someone who easily bleeds when I get my cuticles done with cuticle nippers. I remember when I used to get my nails done at salons, I would always get cut every single time. And e preparation has really helped my skin to just be nice and smooth and clean without any hangnails. I have no hangnails on the sides of my fingers, even my thumb, or sorry, even my middle finger, this is the one I write with. You can see how nice and smooth my skin is. And this is literally just from doing gentle, gentle uh, exfoliation of my skin every time I do my nails and keeping them moisturized with cuticle oil. So keep in mind that not everyone is a candidate for e-file manicures, and I, I really want you to take into consideration you know, what this is going to do for someone. Is it something that's gonna improve their skin, or is it something that is going to potentially make it worse? You really need to start thinking about that. And same thing goes for anything, right? It goes for cuticle nippers, cuticle pushers. Anytime the skin is already irritated, or the nails are already damaged, or the skin is already broken, we wanna really consider what we're doing. We don't wanna just use the same procedure on everybody. We have to really take time to analyze the situation and see if this is gonna work well. Well, how do you know if it's gonna work well? The number one way is do this on yourself. Once you have a feeling for how much is too much, what's gentle, what's aggressive, you will absolutely be able to practice on other people and be able to figure out, is that too much pressure? Are you overworking? The other thing you can look for is something that is really awesome for any skin type, any shade of skin, you're gonna be able to see a change in the skin color while you're working on it. Okay, so let me go back to my fingers here. Now I have extremely pink skin, but I want to show you what this looks like, especially when I'm doing this with a bit that goes on my actual skin. So let me just turn this up a little bit, okay? So if I keep working the same area, and I'm just gonna go over here, I'm just gonna keep pushing on the same area. And yes, this doesn't feel very nice. This feels uncomfortable. Okay, can you see how my skin just went from perfect flesh color to more red? See right there? My skin just went red, okay? So let me show you on a different finger. See how this area right here is like perfect flesh, like same flesh color as here, and same flesh color as here. Let me just do this a few times right in the same spot. And I can tell because it feels uncomfortable, but I'm just gonna do this on the same spot. Can you see how now it's red? Right here, I've got a line that's completely red and this little spot right here looks like it's almost about to break the skin. So take that into consideration. Again, I am a very delicate flower. Not everyone has this type of skin where it's hard to work on um, or it's very, very delicate. But if you have cuticles like mine where they just completely transition from your epinicium out onto your nail plate, then you're gonna have a similar situation where your skin is gonna be more sensitive. So keep in mind as you're working that like anytime you're touching the skin, you know, you can go around and the skin's gonna turn a little bit pink and that's your indication that, hey, the skin has been worked, leave it alone. If it goes back to flesh color and nothing is wrong with it, you can do a teeny bit more, but really take into consideration how much you're working on this finger and watch for redness, watch for changes in skin color. And it does apply to any shade of skin. I'm a very pale person, but um, I've worked on all different shades of skin and it, you can see that pink, that redness come up when you start to irritate that area. Okay, so really look for the redness as you're working um, and, and the feeling on yourself. You can absolutely start to feel like, ooh, that doesn't feel nice. That actually feels a little bit irritating or that hurts or whatever. And again, you don't have to do this type of e-file preparation with your nails and your skin. This is just an added option for those of you that are interested in this, for those of you that are looking to make your appointments more precise and more efficient. <coughs> and
And this is something I did not do when I first started. This is something that I've learned how to do over the years that I've become more confident with as I've worked on nails. And again, this is something that you don't have to do overnight. You can practice a little bit here and there. Um, this is also something you can literally do with two bits. And I really recommend that you guys get um, a cylinder bit and the one that is my favorite for removing skin. So let me show you which ones I would recommend for all of you who are just getting into this. So this one, this style of cylinder is really nice for being able to work on just about anything and being able to get that skin cleaned up. And then for any of the skin removal, I really like this one because of the shape. It allows you to go around the area and clean up the skin without really touching the, the nail bed underneath. Um, so it's really nice to be able to work like this. And I like it because it's also big so you can polish all the way around the finger. Toes, it's also wonderful for, so it has a lot of surface area. I do really like this one. And then a cylinder is a really good go-to for someone who's already, um, smart, sorry, for someone who's a complete beginner and doesn't have a lot of experience with, uh, with e-filing. So you can see some of the product that came off of my nail on here. Um, but these are really good to start with and I'll definitely put the links down below so that you guys can try these. All right, so let's talk about our do's and don'ts for the day. So definitely consider the type of area you're working on. Use a light hand and be delicate. Think of e-file prep as, as if it were nippers and a cuticle pusher. That's the exact same thing that we're doing here. And focus and watch on uh, what you're doing. Look for things like, you know, pink, pink areas starting to form, um, the skin starting to get irritated, uh, stuff like that. And again, you know, I'm by no means condoning that all of you guys go out and start doing this on other people, but I like teaching everything so that you guys can understand how all of this works, just so that when you come across it, you have an explanation in the back of your mind about what all of this is. And today we're just talking about the basics of the bits, but we're gonna get into, you know, specifically how they're used as we move forward with a lot of the tutorials that I've got coming for you. So practicing is obviously important with anything that we learn how to do. Um, but I want you guys to practice on yourselves. Practicing on yourself is really important to get a feel for how heavy handed you are, um, if you're able to achieve this delicately. And honestly, I have taught complete beginners how to do this. It really just comes down to whether or not you have the personality that has that attention to detail. And I, I really think that it's awesome when people are honest with themselves and they say, hey, you know what? I don't trust myself with e-filing because I know I'm just way too heavy handed. Um, you know, that's, that's a good thing to do when you're practicing is really be honest with yourself, be self-aware and understand, you know, what your, what your, your, um, your different personality types have to do with the way that you do nails and whether or not you think this is something that would be good for you to incorporate. Absolutely sanitize your bits in between each use. I don't care if you're just doing this on yourself at home or if you're doing this on friends or if you're even working in a full on salon and you're doing this for clients. Sanitization of your bits is so important because we are touching skin and, uh, and there's, you know, there's, even if you didn't break the skin, there is natural bacteria on everyone's fingers. Um, we want to make sure that we're cleaning those. And even for yourself, there is yeast and bacteria on your own skin. And if you're not cleaning your bits in between each use, you could actually cut yourself next time. And that bacteria is already on your bit from the last time you used it. And you could, um, you know, potentially infect your finger. So sanitize your bits in between, keep them nice and clean and, and keep them away from, um, your other stuff. So take a look at the video that I posted about how to sanitize and how to you know, really um, take into consideration all the safety protocols of what we're doing when you are doing anything, but especially these cuticle bits, we wanna make sure they are clean. Don'ts for the day, don't use pressure. This is not something you need to use pressure. You're gonna use a low speed, you're gonna use very light pressure. This is completely different than working on product. So we don't want to use pressure at all and absolutely make sure that you are balancing your hand. So when I'm talking about um, balancing our hand, I mean, for example, I'll zoom out really quick, okay? So when I am working, I don't just rest the, I don't just rest the bit on my nail while I'm working with my other hand. I always put my, uh, my finger on my hand so that I can actually balance my hand and put that weight of my hand on my other finger, not on what I'm working on, okay? So if you're working on someone else, you're going to basically grab the finger 
and you're gonna hold the finger like this and then you're gonna put your other hand on your fingers that stick out. So typically you kind of do like this and then you can balance your hand like so. I put my weight on my other hand and then that allows me to be much more fine and minute with my movements of my other fingers that I'm using for my e-file. This applies to literally everything that I do with gel, with e-filing, with everything. I always balance my hand. And some people you know, do a two finger balance, some people do one, some people do their ring finger. However it feels comfortable for you to do, I can zoom out just a little bit more so you can see, okay? So I'm gonna balance my hand. I do one pinky, but some people I see do two fingers. Some people do their ring finger and they have it like this. However it feels comfortable for you, um, definitely get into the habit of practicing balancing your hand. And again, if you're doing this on yourself, you're going to balance your hand on your other finger. And when you're doing your pinky is the only time it's a little bit difficult, but I typically will balance up above it like this, okay? So absolutely balance, balance, balance as you move through. Always have your hand touching so that you can really control how much weight you're putting on your brush, on your e-file, on your bits, everything. Don't rest the bit on the nail. Absolutely, don't use carbide on skin. So as you remember from that gold bit I showed you, that is a carbide bit. We do not want to use anything that has flutes or teeth. So even if you see a ceramic bit that has flutes, which are AKA teeth, on it, do not use that type of bit on skin. I really want you guys to only be using diamond um, because the carbide flutes are really going to do a number on your nail plate. They're gonna shave way too much off and they're also gonna cut your skin, which is not what we want. We do not want anything that is in a cutting fashion. Um, don't use this technique on everyone. So like I said, not everyone is a candidate. If they've got broken skin, if they've got irritated skin already, they've got damaged cuticles, maybe they're a nail biter and their, their skin is already pink and bleeding and just sore, do not do e-file preparation on that type of skin. You can do it on the nail plate if the nail plate is healthy, but do not use this on everyone. Not everyone is a candidate. And don't do cuticle prep more than once bi-weekly. This is extremely important. So I know that it is so hard and so tempting to do your nails all the time, especially when you're just getting started with nails or especially when you're, you're a professional at nails and you notice every little like nook and cranny that bothers you. It's very easy to be like, oh, I'm gonna redo my nails again or oh, I'm just gonna go in and clean that little area that's bugging me. But if you overdo this, your skin is absolutely gonna get irritated. Just like if you over exfoliate your face, your skin is gonna get irritated. So. Think about that. Do not do this type of preparation more than once every two weeks. And also, I do not recommend doing e-file preparation if you are removing your gel polish every time. Reason being is that you're probably gonna over file the nail just like you would. So I really like using this technique for overlays like I just did in my previous video. And uh, as I showed you guys how I actually did the cuticle prep for that video, now you guys can see the full thing. Um, so I'm gonna actually put all those pieces together and show you the full video start to finish with the prep in the beginning, the application, the removal, and also with the, um, with the back filling at the very, very end, okay? So now you guys are gonna be able to see the full application start to finish for an overlay. And we are gonna get into this with artificial nails as well, so don't worry, we're getting into that slowly. I just wanna start to expose you to the different things that exist in the nail industry and I think it's important that, you know, a lot of people are gonna watch this video and be like, oh my God, I cannot believe she's showing people how to do cuticle prep with an e-file on YouTube because, oh my God, that people are gonna be chopping their fingers off, you know, after watching this video. But I really believe in two things. I believe in information, which is so important for those of you to be able to decide whether or not this is something you're interested in. Just like I'm not interested in, you know, chainsaws or whatever like I just don't trust myself with a chainsaw and I understand what chainsaws are and I would totally take a class and want to learn about how it works but th that doesn't mean I'm going to pick up a chainsaw and chop off my arm like it's just I think it's ridiculous that we put this much kind of fear-based mongering on specific products on specific techniques because really at the end of the day it comes down to information it comes down to education and the more educated you are and the more information you have the better you're gonna be able to make decisions, the better you're gonna be able to say, no, I don't like that, or no, I don't feel comfortable with that, or yes, I love that, or yes, I wanna learn about this. And you're also gonna be able to discern what's good and what's bad about other stuff that you see. Or when you see someone doing it the wrong way, you're gonna go, hey, that girl's went using way too much pressure, or she's using a carbide bit on skin. That is not what we should be doing. So I really believe in information and what you do with this information is totally up to you, but I believe in sharing information. I believe in making educated individuals that can make decisions for themselves. So that's number one. 
Number two thing about, you know, this whole, I can't believe you're, you know, teaching on YouTube or whatever, is that I just, I think that it's, it's really up to each individual for us to realize that the tools don't hurt people. It's us who hurt people, okay? Whether we're hurting ourselves or family members or clients or whatever. I mean, this inanimate object literally cannot do anything to anyone if someone's not using it. So um, I think that we need to give accountability back to people. I think that instead of protecting everyone and saying, oh my God, like don't show anyone anything, don't talk about it, this is scary, like don't look at it, don't talk about it, don't, you know, whatever. I just, I feel like we need to take off the crazy curtain of fear. We need to put the information out there. We need to give people responsibility and accountability, which means that if after watching this YouTube video, you go and, you know, chop someone's finger off with your e-file, that's on you. That's not something I told you what to do in this video. That's on you. And I really believe in accountability. I think if you're, you know, asking Liz to vent about accountability, I feel like we've lost accountability, you know, recently. I feel like as a, a society, we've lost accountability. And it's really easy to point that finger of blame and say, oh my gosh, you know, like, this is because, you know, that person had access to an e-file. That's why they were able to do that. No, it's not because they had access to an inanimate object. It's because they didn't know what they were doing or they did know what they were doing and they decided to do it badly anyway. And really the accountability and the liability falls on that individual. And yes, that is something that you need to decide whether or not you want to be accountable and liable for your actions. And that's up to each individual to decide. Do you want to be responsible for doing e-file manicures? Do you want to be responsible for using cuticle nippers? Do you want to be responsible for applying artificial product on someone's nails, right? And using a UV lamp or using acrylic or using glue or using whatever. There's lots of stuff that we use for nails and for everything throughout our lives that potentially can be dangerous. Driving a car is more dangerous than doing a cuticle e-file manicure. But we do it with the acceptance of the responsibility that we take on when we get behind the wheel of a vehicle. And it's no different than anything else. So if you feel comfortable in taking on that responsibility of learning how to do it properly, practicing, making sure that you're doing things on the up and up, more power to you. And I believe in that. I believe in giving people the option to choose those things for themselves. And I believe in giving people information. Okay? So that's Liz's rant for the day. And... I will be in touch again next week with another awesome video. All right, bye guys.